guys, a couple of months ago, I, uh, I bought a Chevy Volt, which is this enigmatic car that a lot of people are still confused about. They're not sure if it's a gasoline-powered car or an electric car or a hybrid or a plug-in electric hybrid or... And the truth is, the answer to those questions is yes. Um, it has a gasoline motor. It has, I believe, an 8-gallon gas tank. Mine's a 2013, but they're basically unchanged with a few slight tweaks from 2011 to 2015. Um, the motor in it is a four-cylinder motor. It is coupled through a uh, really clever transmission system to an electric motor. The wheels have regenerative braking, so it's kind of like a, you know, most hybrids out now. Um, it also has, sorry, I'm just leaving my neighborhood, um, an electric motor, so the and a big battery pack that runs down the middle of the vehicle. Tesla does theirs as a flat, kind of like a platter that goes under the vehicle, whereas the Volt, it is more like a, a tube that goes down the middle of the vehicle and then has a T-shape in the back that goes under the back seats. Um, the electric battery, that's called the traction, traction battery because it contro controls the motor that drives the vehicle. Um, that will provide enough power for the vehicle to go about 40 miles, give or take a bit. Depends on the weather, you know, and we had a really brutal winter where I live. And so the weather was uh, under 10 degrees for, I think, three weeks. On top of that, we also had, I think we got up to 26 inches of snow at one point. Um, so I had to put snow tires on, which also didn't help my mileage or my electric range. So I went from about 40 miles of range around here to about, uh, I think my low, when we were below zero at one point, uh, I think I was at 18 miles of range. But uh, anyway, it's it's been a, a really interesting vehicle for me. I used to have a VW Beetle. It was a, a 2.0 liter or 1.9, I forget what the size of displacement was, but it was a you know, four-cylinder diesel it was a TDI and I used to think that thing was the cat's meow because I could get about 50 miles per gallon on the highway which is that's pretty respectable it was a night or 2003 I think or 2002 I don't remember now but uh it wasn't a bad vehicle it had some uh, you know typical Volkswagen electrical quirks I guess is the best way to describe them but on the whole, it was a pretty good, pretty good vehicle. I liked it. Um, but my wife started needing a new vehicle, and we went shopping around. She said, I want to get a vehicle that reduces my carbon footprint as much as possible, but yet I don't want my life dictated by my car. So she didn't want to spend six hours in a city waiting for her car to recharge enough to get home. Um, and that pretty much meant she had to get a hybrid and I started doing research because that's something that I enjoy and she detests. And um, I had known about a Chevy Volt, or known about the Chevy Volt, but I didn't really know about it. I, I knew that it existed and I thought it's some kind of weird hybrid thing and it's a Chevy so it probably can't be all that good of a car. And I started researching it and I realized it had really high reliability ratings um, and like 85 or 90 percent of the miles driven on them are actually electric, which means zero carbon footprint. So that was pretty compelling. And then I thought, well, it must get really bad gas mileage. And it turns out on the highway, it gets about 40, 38 to 42 miles per gallon, something like that. And around town, I think it's 35 to 38. But um, so again, not terrible, not great, but not terrible. Um, compared to my Beetle, it was a little low, but I thought to be honest, most of my driving is around town. The only time I need to go more than 40 miles, I'm driving to Seattle, and that's about 130 miles. Um, 
I did a little number crunching and did up, you know, some research online and found that you know, everyone talked about the Toyota Prius, which it does get better gas mileage. I think it's 60 miles per gallon, give or take a bit. But the Prius always burns gas. Well, not always, but you know what I mean. It's it's always switching back and forth between gas and electric. So that means no matter what, you're going to be burning some gas all of the time. Whereas in the test or the uh, the Chevy Volt, the first 40 miles, give or take, whatever, depending on the year, like I said, um, the first okay, I'll be a little bit conservative. I'll say the first 30 miles, um, no no gasoline's burned, and that was most of my driving is going to be less than 30 miles almost all the time. And so I figured out comparing to a Prius at about 115, 120 miles, something like that, um, that was the break even point. That was where the Prius became more fuel efficient. And I thought, you know, for the half dozen times a year that I have to drive to Seattle or that similar distance, I can suck it up and burn the $3 of gas that it's going to take. It's not that big of a deal. And there are plenty of places that charge in Seattle because I think there are more Teslas in Seattle than there are in uh, the city where the Teslas are made. <laughs> so, um, at any rate, long story short, we bought a Chevy Volt for my wife and she was a happy camper. Um, it took us a while to figure out all the different drive modes on it. I thought, there's only four of them, but it was a little bit confusing because it is, um, there's a normal mode which is it uses electric until the battery is depleted and then it's switched to the gasoline motor. The gasoline motor doesn't actually drive the vehicle most of the time. It actually acts like a generator to power the battery, which can then power the electric motor. Um, and it's you, you don't even notice it when the gasoline motor comes on. It's so quiet, you can't even hear it. So, you know, the road noise makes more noise than the motor does. They've got some pretty impressive hydraulic dampers on the motor mounts to keep it quiet. Um, and then there's a sport mode. The sport mode just basically says, efficiency be damned. I'm going to crank the power and it, it just increases the acceleration a little bit. It doesn't do anything for the top end. The vehicle's limited to 100 miles per hour top end. I think it's 101 or something like that. I don't remember exactly. But, um, it's a very aerodynamic vehicle. Uh, there's not a lot of road noise inside. You can hear right now I'm driving, and it's darn near silent. I, I turned the fan off because it was making uh, a little bit more noise than I wanted for the uh, for recording. Not that that's a lot of noise. It's just that it's... You notice how much noise it makes whenever your vehicle is completely silent. It's interesting. Um, and then, uh, let's see, other drive modes. There's mountain mode, and mountain mode will, um, if you have a full charge on your vehicle, you don't notice any difference in mountain mode until you've consumed half of the battery capacity. When you get down to about 50% battery capacity, it switches into the hybrid mode, so it switches back and forth between gas and electric in such a way that it maintains about a 50% charge on the battery. And it does that because the battery battery motor and the electric motor or the, the electric motor assists the engine from climbing up hills. That's why they call it mountain mode. Um, you get better fuel economy that way. And that's usually whenever we go on a long trip to Seattle because for us we're in the low desert or is it high desert? I think it's high desert. Yeah, high desert. It's like 1100 feet or something like that. We drive up and over Chinook Pass Tana Pass, or a Tana Pass, Umtana Pass, and a couple others on the way to Seattle, and uh, we put it in mountain mode for that, and that way we go about 15 miles on electric, give or take a bit, and then it kicks on to the hybrid mode, and then on the way back down the other side of the mountain, because we're going at highway speeds, it'll still, the gasoline motor's still on, and it'll maintain that charge a little bit so that when we get into Seattle, we can drive in city traffic electric mode um, that has seemed to work very well for us the final mode drive mode is called hold mode so to recap we've got normal sport mountain and hold the hold mode allows you to at any point 
turn on the internal combustion engine and stop consuming or maintain the current charge level of the vehicle. Um, it's, I would love to say it's as simple as that, but if you watch the, there's some, you know, on the infotainment system, there's some screens that show you when it's charging and, or regenerating power and when it's charging and when it's drawing from the engine versus the electric motor and it's not as clean cut as that but it, it's it basically it, it holds the charge at where it was I think it does use the battery somewhat but it doesn't deplete it any more than it currently is so basically it's like mountain mode but you get to pick where it engages rather than holding it at 50% charge um, let's see what are some other odd things that I've learned about the vehicle uh, heated seats I only had I had a uh, VW Beetle for a while that had heated seats okay what is this person doing they're going way under the speed limit for no apparent reason okay I'm trying to figure out where the turning lane is um, I had a, a VW Beetle that had heated seats for a while and it was a great experience and then someone drove over top of my vehicle and destroyed it and so I never got to enjoy that again for a long time. Um, this car has heated seats, and you think of it as a luxury treatment, but the reality is uh, Chevy did it as a energy saving measure because it takes a lot of energy. If you don't have an internal combustion engine that's at 300 degrees to draw heat from, it takes a lot of electricity to heat the cabin of a car. And so they found that it was less energy intensive to heat the seats than to heat the entire cabin of the car. So it's one of those things where it's win-win. They, they're saving electricity and you get something that feels like a luxury feature, but in reality, it's making your vehicle actually work better, which is kind of an odd thing to think about, but it's true. Um, I got the, my, after my wife bought her Chevy Volt, I liked it so much I went and bought one for myself. So hers was kind of a base model. Mine, I ended up getting used as a premium model. So I've got the heated seats, I have automatic dimming mirror, I have all kinds of fancy stuff that makes my vehicle fun, whereas hers is a little more utilitarian. But um, I just thought it was interesting, you know, a lot of people are still confused about what a Chevy Volt is. They, they see me at a gas station and they say, I thought that thing was electric. I'm like, well, yeah, but I do have to put gas in it periodically. And then I see people who see me or they hear me drive by in my neighborhood and they say I thought that thing had a motor you know and they, it's all electric so they're confused so um, it's one of those things where people are still baffled by it it's not that complicated but it is different and that is what people struggle with I think um, it isn't a straight gas engine and it's not a straight electric engine or motor and people are having a hard time coming to terms with that. Some people have the preconception that an electric motor means it's a golf cart. Well, the Tesla Model S is the fastest production vehicle made, and it's not by a small margin either. It uh, pretty much blows the doors off of Ferraris and Lamborghinis for the most part in a quarter mile. After that, things kind of balance out, and then the Ferrari blows the doors off of it. But uh, off the line, Teslas are pretty darn quick. Um, this one, it's not a performance vehicle and it's not a hundred thousand dollar luxury vehicle either so it's it's not going to keep up with the tesla but zero to 30 it's surprisingly sprightly it's uh it'll it'll pin you in the seat a bit and uh it makes driving exciting i'll give it that so i'm just going on a little hike today i thought i would just spend some time on the drive to share my thoughts on the chevy volt because i think more people need to know about it um, i will be getting back to more outdoorsy type stuff soon and hopefully people will bear with me all right thanks folks have a great day bye i forgot to mention earlier that the total overall range on the chevy volt is about 370 miles i think i got that right um, from the, uh, let's see, 40 miles per gallon, I can't be right, 40 miles per gallon times 8 gallons, yeah, 350, about 350 gallons, or 350 miles, we'll say.
so um, it's enough to get you to Seattle and back and uh, on a single tank of gas and probably have some gas left over so I just wanted to throw that in because I forgot to mention it earlier that occurred to me that I should mention is that um, the Chevy Volt in 2016 was somewhat redesigned. They didn't um, do a, a full redesign, but they made some changes to the battery, uh, made it a little bit bigger, a little bit lighter, they made the engine a little more powerful, and they made it able to run on regular gasoline previous generation, uh, 2011 through 2015, all required premium gas. So the upshot of making the battery lighter and making the engine stronger and the electric motor stronger is that the vehicle actually is able to go, I believe, 50 miles is what it's rated at. Whereas the previous generation, as of 2015, they had increased the battery a little bit and uh, done some other stuff to it, it was able to go 40 miles. So, um, that's where the Volt stands now, I believe it's the 2017 model is the one that's on the Volt. Um, so yeah, that's those are the things that I wanted to share. Um, I just got done with a 14 mile hike, and my hands feel like swollen balloons, I'm swinging at my sides. Anywho, I guess I will uh, talk to you again soon.